Well, that's exciting. What a what a relief. I want my $25 in pennies. Yeah. And uh I forgot about that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I want it in a really weird and difficult or just in coffee cakes. <laughs> See how many quarters? That would be 100 quarters. That could be fun. 100 quarters? Is that right? Four quarters per dollar, 25 times four. Okay. Yeah. Lauren, how many quarters in $25? How many quarters in $25? A hundred? You're right. Okay. I I no. I knew that I'm like, ooh, it was I good. Like that's no, you were you were on the on the spot. You you aced it. Yeah, I was really nervous for you because I couldn't have figured it Thanks. out. <laughs> <laughs> are you a are you a math major? Besides, uh, no, I'm a marketing major, sophomore. You should consider math too. You were quick on the draw. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad my years paid off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a minute, and then we'll. Yeah, show you have two minutes. Oh, read AI is read AI is back. What is it? Let me I deny it. Or that could be a recording device, right? Well, I just hit record. Okay. I remember it. Sorry. Lauren, are you, so you are a sophomore, correct? Yeah. Awesome. How Maggie your Brady. Been? Is Maggie Brady one word, one name? Is that like a... No, sorry. <laughs> just um, first name Maggie, last name Brady. <laughs> I like it. I think related to Tom. Would be a great first name. Thanks. Do you have an uncle named Tom, by the way? I wish I did. <laughs> I wish I did too. I have I do have an uncle Tom, actually. Um Is he did he play quarterback for the Patriots? He didn't, unfortunately. But I feel like between me and Maggie, we can make your dreams come true. <laughs> <clears throat> this is great. Hello, yeah. Haley. Hi, how are you? Great. Thanks for coming. Jillian, hello. Hi. Avery. Hi, Jillian. Hi, Avery. And Amaya's, Amaya's been in uh, <clears throat> She's surveillance, just, surveillance so mode this entire time. Hi, I'm so hey. sorry. I just woke up, so I look so bad right now. It's all good. It's all good. A world, almost a world record turnout for uh, one of our online info sessions. Thanks to Jillian, Jack, Amaya, all of you. Hey, Jack. Yeah. You've got uh, you've got LMU dorm room vibes right now. Feeling? Am I feeling dorm room vibes? Uh yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> Sweet, you got some good light in there, though. Hmm. What do you think, Professor Rom? Another, another minute. Let's start right at ten oh two. Maybe one more minute. We're glad that y'all could make it. Hopefully, we were having um, our sessions on Friday. We realized some people couldn't attend, so we wanted to offer a non-Friday session and something that was maybe more accessible to some folks. So we're we're glad you're here. I'm curious, how'd you guys find out about the info session? Well, I, <clears throat> I found out through email, so. The email blasted yeah. about yesterday or the day before? Um, <clears throat> I think the day before. Cool. Yeah, I saw it on like the CBA newsletter thing. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you ready? You're nodding yes, uh, CBA newsletter? Yeah, my roommate, Um, she's in the M school. She told me about it and then I got the email. Sweet. Who's your roommate? Uh, Bella Eaton. Sweet. What up, Bella? <laughs> Hi, Karina. Hi. I like Sorry, that. I'm having some trouble with audio. You got Starbucks vibes right now. Feel that. Lucas, welcome. Uh, Are you with us? <clears throat> okay, maybe. All not. right, I'm gonna Brilliant. I'm gonna share my screen, Professor Rome, and then. Let's uh, let's get going. Um, well, welcome to the, I guess this would be the third of four info sessions, but our 
our second of three for this spring semester. And we like to say welcome enemies that if you join M School, we encourage you to become enemies of the ordinary. So um, welcome, welcome to you. So my name is Professor Matt Steffel. My name is Professor Andy Rome. Together, we're Mandy. Andy. And we have a video about that. Uh, I'm Matt Steffel. I'm Andy Rome. And together, together, we're Mandy. I'm the... <laughs> <laughs> I think only one person. I'm Andy Rome. And together, we're, we're Mandy. Mandy. I'm a co-director of the M School. <laughs> and we're the co-directors of the M School program at Loyola Marymount. Good All job, right. Professor Steffel. Thank you. Thank you. We like to make a lot of video around here. Um, so just a quick, a little quick background on sort of why what is M school and why are we here and what role, what sort of gap are we filling in the marketplace? And you guys might've heard this in one of your classes along the way, but scientists somewhere have figured out that we receive as, you know, as few as 5,000 marketing signals, as many as 20,000 marketing signals on any given day. Obviously this is an extreme example of, um, of a Times square, but just sort of in our day-to-day -day lives as we're perusing, TikTok and Instagram and watching stories and going on Amazon and seeing each other's shoes and logos on that we that there's 5000 marketing signals that are coming at coming towards us each day. And there's lots of good content out there too. Um this number used to be 400 but now it's 500 hours of content are uploaded to YouTube every minute. And just to put that into perspective, anybody know how many hours are in an average work week? It's 40. You will know this number someday. 40 <laughs> hours is on average how if you get a job, if you have a full-time job, they're, they want you to be there at least 40 hours. It's eight hours a day, five days a week. And so I don't know how many times, Professor Rome, how many times does 40 go into 500? That would be about 12 and a half times. <laughs> Three and a half months of work time. Just imagine that three and a half months of you sitting in an office full time is uploaded to YouTube every single minute around the clock. It's a lot of cat videos. It's also just a lot of great content that people want to spend their time consuming. And very importantly, it's not your ad. It's not your client's ads. It's not the stuff that you're creating in many instances um, that your clients think that like, oh, people are just going to want to consume this. Microsoft conducted a study a few years ago now, and they figured out that the average American's attention span was about eight seconds. And the maybe the sad thing or just the reality of it is that years before that, it was 12 seconds. Our attention span is declining over time. And I even noticed this. I watch movies with my kids. We tried to watch E.T. I don't know if you guys have ever seen E.T. Nothing happens for about 20 minutes. And my kids were so bored about two minutes in. There was no explosion. There was no fire. There was no bomb. There was no nothing. And so we lose attention really fast. Does anyone want to guess what a goldfish's attention span is? Put it in the chat. Two seconds. Good guess. Four. Long, yes, Haley, you nailed it. A goldfish's attention span is nine seconds that we officially have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. And last little slide of this section is this subway looking map is actually a map of how the digital ecosystem works. It's a representation. And what you'll notice is that there's a lot of components and a lot of paths. And so if you're a marketer and you want your content to reach an audience, there's a million intermediaries that it has to funnel through in terms of auctions and bidding and targeting and reporting and analytics. And, uh, and so it's a really complex ecosystem. There's a lot of great content that's out there. There's a lot of competition for eyeballs and we have a really short attention span. Do you guys see all of a sudden how this might be a problem for marketers? So I'm gonna turn it to Professor Rome to do a little storytelling. Hmm. I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Where are we? Oh, sorry. Uh, so About seven seconds <laughs> about, 
about 12 years ago, once upon a time, 12 years ago, we were approached, we meaning LMU, we were approached by an organization called Think LA. Think LA represents all of the major advertising agencies in Los Angeles. And they came to LMU with a problem. And that problem was they weren't finding really good talent coming out of, um, you know, recently grad recent graduates from universities. They would hire marketing majors from USC, UCLA, LMU, Pepperdine, and uh, they just weren't cutting it. Um, they needed a lot of training. They'd end up getting trained and then maybe leave after six or nine months and go to a new agency. And so there's a really le big level of frustration amongst these agencies. They needed better talent. So Think LA, this um, advertising organization in Los Angeles came to us with the idea to transform the way we taught marketing, branding, and advertising. So from that marriage of LMU and our College of Business Administration and the Think LA organization, M School was born back in 2012, 2013. Um, so we're on our 11th or 12th year. Our mission has remained the same, and that is to work really hard to provide a world-class marketing and advertising education that stays relevant uh, which is really tough today because things change really fast, um, you know, every day, every week. And so we work really, really hard to keep our curriculum current to introduce you to the best industry connections that that we can muster um, and basically um, give you real life projects and situations so that when you graduate, agencies are going to be clamoring for your level of talent. Uh, I think we have another video. All I am is the video introducer in this program. The question isn't what are we going to do, the question is what aren't we going to do. I don't even have any good skills. You gotta work a little so you can ball a lot. play a game maybe everyone put two observations from that video what did you notice in that video that you think might make m school different from a typical program typical class what was something that caught your eye no textbooks mm -hmm. okay that seems to have landed with many of you what else real challenges This is excellent. Yeah, this is great. I think you guys really are nailing. So real, 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 real clients, real challenges, real projects, real successes, real failures. Um, there's a there's a project that we have, for example, called Marketing for Good, where you identify a problem in the community, you create a, a product or a marketing message, you pitch your idea, you get real money, and you have to build a real campaign in the remaining seven weeks of the class, which You'll never learn more about what it's like to launch a campaign than actually launching a campaign. Um, we have real clients, but also it's it. I think many of you pointed out it's it's a it's like a boot camp. We work really hard to solve real um, stuff, but because it's a two year program and it's a cohort, so the group that you apply with that you get accepted with, you take these classes. It's a real like strong family vibe as well. So it's a really strong community. I don't know those of you who have friends in the M school, I think one of the really special things about it is the friendships that we form. Awesome. Let me see. You want to take this professor? Sure. sure. So as we, you know, as we've built and grown the M school over time, we've, we've thought to ourselves, so what skills are we actually um, teaching our, our students, our M schoolers? And if you think about the, like the technical skills today, Excel, search, 
um, Facebook advertising, a lot of those technical skills change every day or every week. So it's it's hard to keep up with um, the fast pace of change of, of technology. So you'll develop skills, but you always have to keep like kind of reinventing those skills. What we came upon was this concept of meta skills or skills that can transfer across any area that you work in. And those are what we call the four C's, creativity, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking. And we're convinced and research has shown that these higher level skills are going to make you far more attractive when you graduate than um, not to diminish your technical skills, but mastering the four C's um, will be, will help you succeed in any walk of life in any career that you, um, you pursue after graduation. Yeah. And one technology that wasn't mentioned, but is permeating everything is AI and AIs are basically the robots. And in many instances, the robots are coming for your jobs, but these are the skills that the robots still can do. You can still be the master of the robots if you know these things. So we like to think we're trying to make you robot proof as well. Mm -hmm. um, locally, we're so lucky on the bluff in, uh, in Westchester overlooking Playa Vista that there are hundreds of creative, creative and media businesses, tech businesses. Uh, many are just minutes away. They're starting to come back to the office. In many instances, they're still kind of hybrid and part-time remote. But the great news is, is that we have hundreds, many, many hundreds of connections at all of these agencies. And Professor Rome mentioned, you know, our the technology is constantly changing. The tools are constantly changing. The, the, our secret sauce, and don't let anybody know, but our secret sauce to staying relevant and to keeping our content fresh, Professor Rome likes to say we our content has a use-by date on it, is that we invite uh, industry pros um, to participate in every single class and every single project. Um, and we did the math last year. We figured out that across our <clears throat> very across our two years of M School courses, over a hundred industry professionals participate in our classes on an annual basis, mentoring teams, giving us projects, becoming panelists, uh, session leaders and speakers. That's how we do it. That's the secret sauce is the folks on the front lines are to helping us develop our curriculum, de deliver our curriculum, create our projects, evaluate our projects. Um, and that's how we stay fresh and relevant. Yeah, I'll just add that those industry pros keep us on our toes because we can't just get by with dusting off a syllabus from the year 2018 in the year 2024. I mean, six years has made a huge difference in the world of business and marketing. Professor Steffel mentioned AI. So they keep us on our toes and that just forces us to keep our make our courses relevant. This just shows some of the partnerships. We talked about our industry connections. Uh, they work at companies like... Mattel, Red Bull, Taco Bell, Facebook, Electronic Arts. You might recognize many of these of these companies, but again, as we mentioned, we're blessed to be on the bluff, surrounded by so many um, strategic and creative marketing marketing companies. Indeed. So the program, you'll notice in the video, I'd say one thing that video is totally right, except for it mentioned two tracks. We. We're not calling them tracks anymore. We're calling them focus areas. And you probably saw in the video, we talked about content creation and strategy management. I want to first call out the color, content creation, blue, strategy management, and green. This will be relevant when we get to the next slide when we talk about curriculum. Content creation isn't like becoming a YouTube creator. It's, I think a lot of people think of that. It's about making stuff, making stuff in service of um, advertising, branding, marketing. It's um, video creation, it's website creation, it's app creation. So it's creating content that users um, engage with and interact with. And we create a variety of stuff along the way. Um, and so there's sort of two mindsets. And again, if you're interested in strategy management, you can still explore content creation. If you're interested in content creation, you're still going to get a, a, a big heaping of uh, strategy management curriculum coming your way. Um, but we tend to recruit people that have interests in these uh, in these various areas. So content creation is if you would know you're a content creator if you love making stuff. If in your uh, Greek organization, you're the one making all the flyers and creating all the websites and doing the videos. Or if you love making 
TikToks. If you love to create stuff, you're probably a shoe in for the content creation. If you love to think about how to approach solving problems, if you love talking to people, if you're a real, if you love culture and pop culture, you're probably a shoe in for the strategy management group. Also with the strategy management, if you're the like group leader and you like to create the spreadsheets and get everyone, make sure that everyone's on time. And if you love lists and box checking, we love you. That is a great skill set that keeps uh, teams going. Also too, there's another skill set within that, that if you're the like, the oil to the machine, if you're the group cheerleader and you keep people excited and fired up, these are all really important personas that make group work go really, really well. So we try to look for those skills. So remember that content creation, blue strategy, management, green. Professor Steffel, where do you fall in those two? Or are you kind of like in between? Yeah. Well, I did my, i had jobs where I was literally a copywriter. So I was a content creator and I got paid for it. And I, I spent most of my 25 year career in strategy. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say my stronger skill set is in, in strategy. Um, but I dabble, I dabble in the other as well. What about you? You know, I wish I could say I was more of a content creator, but I'm definitely the box checker and I'm definitely the kind of the cheerleader. Um, but that's not to say that I'm not a creator or that I don't have any sense of creativity. I think we all do, but um, yeah, I think I'm more, more of a thinker than a doer. I think professor him selling himself short. He's a prolific writer. Um, he can crank out a 20 page manuscript uh, in the amount of time that it takes me to write one page. Professor Rome has written a 20. You are correct. And if you're interested in writing um, the branding and advertising field is a great field for you because of copywriting, you know, coming up with scripts and, um, content for the written content for that drives a lot of advertisements. Professor, one, do you want do you want to describe the? Yeah, sure. sure. So the M School curriculum um, is a custom made curriculum. We've developed these courses over over the past few years, and many of them, as we mentioned, change. Um, you know, depending on what's happening in in society, what's happening in industry. But overall, for the M School curriculum, which is one of the four pathways within the marketing major. There are five required courses, marketing 3512, which is the uh, consumer insights course. That's a course, hopefully you will be taking, if you haven't taken it yet in your sophomore year, you'll need to take it um, fall, junior year, um, at the maybe the latest spring of your spring semester of your junior year. So put 3512 on your radar screen if you haven't taken it and um, do your best to register for it for, for fall. Um, another prerequisite would be the B Core 3510. This is a course that most sophomores are taking. If you're not taking that, again, take it your fall semester of your junior year. It's the core, the business and marketing communications course required for all CBA majors. Then your junior year is when you start your M school curriculum. So if you apply the spring and then you're accepted for fall 24, your first class is the new world of branding and advertising. And you see the color coding, uh, the, the courses with the green and the blue dots indicate it's a mix of, it's a blend of both content creation and strategy and management. Um, New World of Branding and Advertising course is what we call our flagship course. It's a great course because you work on a real life project called Marketing for Good. You pitch for real money and you introduce real products or campaigns um, throughout that semester. Then if you move to spring of your junior year, we have three what we call M School elective classes. And you'll choose one of these three to take your spring semester. Um, Matt, do you want to talk about the two brand planning and conceptual brand thinking and I'll cover production tools? Sure. So if you, if you think about how the creative marketing industry, so there's a lot of ad agencies and there's ad agencies that are inside corporations that they have their own ad agency. There's also ad agencies that companies hire out. There's, there's hundreds of them. The industry is growing. They're hiring more and more people. So that problem that professor Rome outline that we discovered 12 years ago still exists. And those agencies love the M school, especially in LA. They all know us. If, if you apply to them and you've got an M school uh, blue square on your resume, they definitely pay 
attention. We've, we've carved out a really nice uh, perception in the marketplace. And so what we start doing is this Professor Rome likes to call this new world of branding and advertising, Professor Rome calls it the Belgian beer sampler of courses. And so you take a little bit of strategy, you take a little bit of, con of conceptual thinking, you take a little bit of media, you take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you apply it throughout the year. And then what we do is over this semester and this semester, we dive deeply into what are kind of the key disciplines of the creative marketing industry or within ad agencies. And so kind of the departments within an ad agency are strategy, creative, production, media, and then kind of like digital content creation and project management. Um, and so we, we have an opportunity to dive deeply into the specific discipline. So brand plan and strategy is what I've done for the last 25 years. Um, and it's about generating consumer insights and coming up. So strategy, my favorite definition of strategy is an informed opinion about how to win. We basically, we get a brand problem, we conduct some research and we have a, an opinion about if you do this, this is how you're going to win in the marketplace. And it's very much like sort of uh, if you like puzzles and if you like to sort of solve complicated problems and come up with a really simple, elegant solution, people tend to really love brand planning. Also, if you like talking to people, if you like hu studying human nature and human um, behavior, brand planning and strategy is a great course. Cons and we like to think about it like this. Anyone have a dog in here? Who has a dog? I do. I do. A couple hands going up. Professor Rome um, loves his loves his dog. I'm sure we all love our dogs. Um, if you want to give your dog medicine and you just give it a pill, what does it do? Lauren, what does your dog do when you try to just give it a pill? Uh, he spits it out. Like immediately, <laughs> right? So the strategy that you create is the pill. It's really, really important. But consumers do not want your marketing messages, as we noticed, right? They have a short attention span. There's a lot of competition of good content. What we do in conceptual brand thinking is we, we deliver what I call the cheese. If you want your dog to eat the pill, you wrap it in some cheese or you put it in some peanut butter. And so what we do is we come up with conceptual wrappers to deliver uh, strategic content that people love to consume. And so this is very much a hardcore um, creative concept creating course where we're actually making ad-like objects um, that people would want to consume. So it's about creating entertaining, fun, interesting concept that delivers a strategic message without people even knowing. You want to talk about production tools? Sure. So if, if you've ever wanted or thought of developing, building an app, this would be a really fun course for you. In production tools and techniques, we work um, with a software called Figma. Um, Figma is an app development tool. And what you do throughout the semester is come up with a, a problem or a business idea that you want to promote with an app. Could be from your marketing for good project from your junior year. Um, that new world of branding and advertising class. It could be a startup or just something that may be a business that you, or some kind of social good movement that you want to, you want to start. Um, so throughout the semester, you apply the software called Figma to building a clickable prototype of an app. So basically a clickable prototype, it looks like an app. It feels like an app. It works like an app. It's just not a live app, but the navigation, the design, all of the elements of the app are there. You just haven't gone live with it. And then the second part of that is you develop a very short one minute video to promote your app. So it's it's a course that combines digital production, digital product development with video production. And we think those are two really important tools to put in your toolkit. Um, um, not only at LMU, but when you um, go forth after graduation. And then I'll just go to your senior year. Um, two electives are the adaptive media course and full funnel content development course. And these are, again, you're going to choose one of these two electives, your, the fall semester of your senior year. Adaptive media is a really deep dive into the world of media, which is when you create the, once you have the content, it's how do you reach people? Where do you reach them? And who do you reach? So you work on a media plan for a live client. And then in full funnel content development, um, mix of content creation and strategy, 
we work through what we call the marketing funnel, which at the top of the funnel, it's the wider part of the funnel. We call that the awareness aperture, where your first job as a marketer, as a creative marketer, is to make people aware of what your message is or what you're, what you're selling or what you're providing. And then as you work through the funnel, you move from awareness to consideration and interest to the bottom of funnel or the most narrow part of the funnel, which is when people actually purchase your um, your product or your offering, and then even how do they behave and what do they do after purchase or post-purchase. Wait, Yeah, I think that what makes these courses special again is this is very much sort of analytical and project management. This course is a combination of the two. In some instances, for example, in this course, actually, let's talk about creative brand management. That's your capstone course, and it's a true capstone. And so what we uh, have been doing for the last four years now is we enter a national creative student competition. Um, for the last three years, we entered one called the Effie Collegiate Brand Challenge. And it's a, it's a global ad competition where students respond to a brief. They come up with a strategy. They come up with creative work. They come up with a media plan, all things that you've studied along the way. Um, and then they submit, they do a submission. Um, and we're really proud. Two years ago, we won first and second place in this competition. Last year, we were the first school in history of the competition. We won first, second, and third. So all of our teams um, went to and won the finals. Two years ago, we uh, pitched to our clients in New York. Last year, we pitched to our clients in Detroit. <laughs> this year, we're pivoting a little bit. We're entering a new competition called the Future Lions, which is um, the Cannes Film Festival has a advertising section called the Can Lions. And uh, there's a, a quite a few teams that, that compete for this, uh, but they pick five teams that go and pitch their ideas on the sandy beaches of Cannes, France um, this summer. So we're hoping to be um, a couple, one, at least one, if not more of those five teams that go to France um, and get to pitch live. Um, and then students who go on and win these competitions generally have really illustrious careers that follow as well. And just one quick note, um, these courses that are smaller, they're usually capped at about 24 seats. Um, and then you dig deeply into uh, the strategy or content creation content. The foundation course, the flagship course and the capstone course, all of our group, about 45 or so students, we come together, we form interdisciplinary teams, and then we attack um, a real world project um, as a group. And so you play, this is you learn deeply about the roles. This is you kind of play a particular role um, in those courses. And we kind of function like an actual agency uh, where we do all the different components along the way. Any questions about the curriculum map or any of the, the different focus areas? Sweet. So just to summarize, um, as one of the four marketing pathways, five required courses, including consumer insights, two M school required courses, new world and creative brand management. Um, and then two electives that you'll take in your spring semester, junior year, fall semester, senior year. It goes without saying. So the M school is one of four pathways. Um, and no matter what, if you are a marketing major at Loyola Marymount University, you will take 35, 12 and four upper division electives. So you will graduate LMU with a marketing major. If you enter the M school, you'll graduate with a marketing major. Um, what do we call it? It's a, and it says on your transcript with a focus area. Or uh, a, yeah. Integrate. So it's, it reads marketing major on your transcript. Um, you would be, it's a great resume, resume builder and industry connector to, um, have the M school pathway as, as part of your repertoire. Um, every year we partner with real, real clients. This is a very short list, um, brands like beyond meat and Google taco bell, smaller local brands like gate 14, which is a CrossFit gym, uh, family promise, which is a organization that helps battered women, uh, LA Department of Public Health to help them promote um, uh, opioid uh, awareness for the opioid crisis. Um, brands like PetSmart, 
Mattel, the list goes on and on and on. So every year we have a very, we have a series of very special clients that we um, are solving their real problems for. And every year we also have a group of students that run our, what we call our agency M. And this is the kind of in-house agency that drives um, our M school promotional efforts. So we let people know, like, for instance, you might've found out about this info session today on our M school Instagram. That would be uh, because of agency M. So they do a lot of really creative work, um, primarily Instagram, um, TikTok, of course, and it's a great resume builder for them because they're actually um, you know, doing live live work to help build and, and grow our M school program. Um, and we have, so the, again, this, we give the students the keys and they make whatever. I just noticed there was a post, uh, a new post somewhat uh, recently, and then there'll be some Valentine's Day stuff coming later today. Uh, that was pretty funny. So um, recommend following if you haven't already. Yeah, that's um, what LMU, I'll put in the chat, LMU M School. LMU M School. Um, so how to apply is so the app, so the program is geared towards uh, rising juniors, meaning that you're currently a sophomore um, at the time of application and that come next fall, you will be a junior. So you'd generally be class of 2026. Also too, if for some folks, we sometimes have people join who are currently at another institution and they think they're going to be transferring. So we welcome transfers. But again, I think because it's a two-year uh, program is that uh, to be currently in your sophomore year, applications will be due um, at right before midnight on Monday, April 1st, 2024. Um, and then we work really, really hard to get announcements out by the end of that week, generally before anyone's enrollment opens. If you do apply, and we'll just say this here, if you do apply and you have like a super early enrollment for whatever reason, you should enroll as if you didn't get in, and then you can always go back and uh, swap your classes out because seats will be held for the M school students. Um, to apply, you go, so our website is literally m.school. Um, that'll take you to the website. And then there's a little hamburger on the top of the screen, three lines, and then you'll see a section called four students and then apply. And then once you're in there, it's a Qualtrics, basically like a Qualtrics interface. It'll ask you your name. It'll ask you your student email. It'll ask you your GPA. Um, we'll actually talk more about the requirements. Part of it is asks you, like, which focus area are you interested in? I told you, if you love making stuff, you might be a shoe in for content creation. If you love puzzle solving and keeping people on track, you're probably more well positioned for um a strategy management. However, we do have a quiz. We call it the focus finder and that we outline a variety of roles within creative marketing, way more than just the two or three that I've mentioned. You can kind of see where your interests lie. Um, and then Professor Romeo, talk about the requirements. Yeah. So part of your application will be submit your most current resume, uh, your current GPA, if you have a focus area of preference, so for instance, if it's content creation, then mark content creation. If it's strategy management, mark strategy management. If you're undecided, uh, if you're like in the middle or a hybrid, um, you can mark either. So you don't have to commit to either content creation or strategy. And then the kind of the center point for the application is a one minute video case study um, submission. And we'll explain what that case study is all about. but. You're going to create a one minute video. It's in two parts. Part one is addressing a problem. Part two is um, talking about what inspired you to, to attack that, that problem. So it gets us to kind of know how you think, and it gets us to know you maybe a little bit better as a person, your personality, your way of thinking. And so it's just a way for you to shine um, in one minute of content. If you're thinking about study abroad, which many of you are, we love study abroad. We encourage it. Um, the world is a big place and we think it's important to get kind of get out of the United States and experience new people, new cultures. It's totally fine. What you would do is just make up those M school courses that you missed during your semester abroad um, the, following, the following year. So if you go study abroad spring semester of your junior year, 
and you're that would be the the semester where you take one elective you would just make up that elective plus your um that capstone course creative brand management the spring semester of your senior year um i wanted to make one uh, additional detail so if you say that your interest area is content creation or if you say either so those are your content creation strategy management or either a question will pop up on the application that asks you what your hard skills are within that arena, video editing, Photoshopping. So a lot of the content creation world is tools based and we're just keenly curious about which tools you're currently familiar with. So there's an op opportunity to elaborate on that. And I see a question from Lucas in the chat, which is what is the ratio of people that apply and get in and it really depends on the year. We've had as few as 80 applications. We've had as many as 150 or 160. Um, and so it, some years it's less competitive. Some years it's more competitive. It's almost impossible to predict what it's going to be. Um, so somewhere between a 50% and 25% acceptance rate in general. Mm -hmm. well, we like to say, if you don't apply, then you're not on the radar screen. So we encourage you, if this at all sounds interesting, um, you're excited about the application, apply, give it, a, give it a shot, give it a chance. Let's talk about the application. Uh, so Professor Rome mentioned it's a two-part application. Uh, part one is a 30-second, this is sort of advertising code for 30-second public service announcement video. Um, and so, and the, your brief is on average, every American wastes about 325 pounds of food each year. There's 33 million food insecure Americans, meaning people who don't, who aren't sure where their next meal is coming from. Your job is to create a 30 second public service announcement video to encourage Gen Z to waste less food. The purpose of part one is to allow you to flex your strategic and creative muscles. And what we're going to do is we're going to get down here is that if your video simply says you eat you there's enough food to feed everybody and you should waste less food it's probably not gonna be enough you need a point of view or a perspective so that this is all pill no one wants your pill you gotta wrap that pill in some interesting cheese that makes people think about this in a way that perhaps they haven't thought about it before or in a way that they want to consume and remember this message in the past. Because if this is competing with the next best cat video, it's going to get skipped, right? So you have to start to think about, if I have 30 seconds to compel someone to think about something or to change their behavior, how can I deliver it in a way that it's going to get them to want to change their behavior or remember what my message is? You want to talk about the second part? Sure. And then so part two is... Really understanding why you recommended what you recommended in your um, in part one in your public service announcement. Uh, it's a way for us to get to know kind of how you think, how you approach a problem, how you might uh, address that um, brief in part one. Um, and just to really to kind of get to know what kind of what makes you tick and how you um, how you solve problems. You know, one of the things we do is after students go through the M School program, we ask them in their the last class of their senior year, and we go, what did you take away from this program? And probably half the people raise their hand and will say, I learned that my first idea is usually not my best idea. Um, and I would encourage you all to dig a little deeply on this, is that I can almost guarantee you that all of your first ideas will be very similar to each other. And that's not a great way to break through on this. So we're looking, the purpose of this is to see how you think and how you can solve problems in a creative and unexpected way. And so what we're looking for are unique and unexpected ideas. So think about human behavior, think about how people think, think about people behave, and then deliver that story that's competing with the next cat video that's out there. <laughs> also, if our audience is Gen Z, is think about, how can you appeal to this Gen Z audience? When you think of a typical public service announcement, 
I think of a Sarah McLaughlin video and a sad dog in a cage. Don't do that, right? Think about what kind of content do young people want to consume? Probably looks more like TikTok and less like a TV ad is at least my guess. And then lastly, showcase your personality. Let us see who you are and the kind of stuff that you create. The other big secret of advertising, branding, and marketing, and probably the discussion we have in the last class of the last year is, oh my God, I realize I am the secret sauce to creating really interesting stuff. Let us see who you are through the work that you create. It doesn't have to be you, but we should sense your personality. If you've ever watched stand-up, what makes stand-up comedians funny is they're telling us about how they view the world. And we want to see that same perspective from you. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if, let me just say, if this all sounds interesting to you, I, we would, we'd recommend starting today, tonight, tomorrow, just come up with a bunch of ideas. Some of them are going to be pretty bad. Some of them are going to be like, okay, that's kind of interesting, but I don't know, like take an index card and just start writing down, scribbling down ideas, put them on your phone. Um, maybe it's 20, maybe it's 50, maybe it's 100 ideas. And out of that, you're going to stand a much better chance of coming up with a really exciting idea for your case study than just if you came up with three, four or five ideas. So that's just our, our recommendation. Uh, so within the application, <clears throat> there's a handful of questions. You're going to upload your resume. And then there's a box where you're just going to upload um, your link. Uh, whatever you can upload, YouTube, Vimeo, it doesn't really matter. Don't password protect it. You don't have to put your name on it as long as we can see what it is. You can do it as unlisted if you've never uploaded a YouTube link. Unlisted just means that people can't find it when they search for it. Um, just make it really easy for us to find and view when we are reviewing the applications. Question in the chat, Karina asks, if you don't have access to a high quality camera, is that okay? I mean, um, your phone is, I don't know what phone you have, but I'm guessing it's plenty high quality. There are full, I think Apple films all of its commercials on an Apple iPhone. Um, so if you got a phone, you're going to be in great shape. If you don't have a phone and if you really don't have access to it, we can have a conversation and we can probably figure out a way to, to get you some tech. Skylar asks, are there any extra costs with being accepted into the M school? There's no extra financial costs. In fact, you know, we like to think we're saving you money without textbooks and things like that. Um, you know, there are, it's a lot of work. And so each class involves pretty significant time commitment, um, but it's not, more than, you know, we're not ignoring the fact that you take other courses, mm -hmm. but in each class, we expect like 100% attendance. You've got a lot of group work and we really emphasize that you're part of a team and you need to, you know, um, fill the role w within your team as much as you, as much as you can. So we, um, yeah. There are no extra financial costs, which I think, which I think was Skylar's yeah. purpose of his question. This might also be helpful. What do we look for when we're reviewing applications, resumes? We're looking for a, what we call a diverse and complementary group of people. The the mat we have two two pieces of magic in M school. Magic number one is we have lots of industry involvement. I already told you that one. The other magic is we recruit an amazing group of people. And so what we look for is diverse and complementary. We look for people who have different interests, different worldviews, different creative styles, different points of view, and then we, and then also different skill sets. And so uh, Lauren might be really into After Effects. Maggie might be really into Photoshop. Karina is a Canva expert. Is we want to bring people together who already have different skills that they've been cultivating. And then we let you run those skills in your group projects, and then you solve your problem, your projects in your own way. That's how the real world works anyways, right? We definitely train you some skills, but we hope that you have skills and interests that you're bringing to bear in the classroom, and we want to see those. So let that stuff shine through in your application, in your resume, um, in your video. Give us a sense for who you are and how you see the world and how you approach problem solving. Um, that's going to help us to form this really awesome class where you guys learn from each other as much as you learn, if not more than you learn from us. 
I think that's it. We have some. Uh, so mschool at lmu.edu. If you have general questions, you can reach out to Professor Rome or I. Um, Andy Escobar, unfortunately, has um, he has moved. He has moved on to um, other things. Uh, if you want to reach our website, m.school, and our Instagram is lmumschool. Uh, I don't wait. Are you guys not seeing this now? Because I unshared that. Hold on. Do you guys see it or no? No. Okay. Uh, let me share that back for our final, our final slides. Oh boy. Sorry. My screen looks different. Here we go. Uh, last little bit here. So here's get in touch. Feel free to take a screen grab or whatever. Highly recommend following our Instagram. There's actually some tips on applications on Instagram. They're actually for a previous assignment, but we're always looking for the same thing. The assignment changes, but what we're looking for remains the same. Interesting people with a unique point of view. If you like advertising, branding, marketing, that's a really good start also. Like if you sort of know the mechanics of what makes good content, try to follow some of that. Um, and then we have a CBA advantage, um, code here. You can get some, some credit for this. And then maybe now would be a good time to see if there are any final questions yeah. from Jillian, Lucas, Skyler. Yeah. I'll leave this up for another 10 seconds. Lauren, Maggie, Haley, Karina, Jack. Um, I had a question. Uh, I was wondering with our video for the 30 seconds, at least for the first part, would you recommend like using, um, say, because if I'm like have a background with maybe some video editing apps, would you recommend like maybe putting in music or like uh, pictures or something just to spice it up? You should make a piece of 30 second content that you would want to watch. And okay. so if you want to watch stuff with cool graphics and music. You should put cool graphics and music. If you would prefer something that's silent and boring, then you should make it silent and boring. But I would make it fun. All right, sounds good. Thank yeah. you. Um, quick question that's kind of similar. For the second 30 seconds, is it like just, it's like no longer the idea of like you're creating something to get people's attention. It's more like you're still getting people's attention, but is it more just like you're chatting, like yeah. almost like a FaceTime call, but obviously more put together and professional? BTS, behind the scenes. This is sort of where my idea okay. came from. It occurred to me, <clears throat> I came up with 500 things and the one that stood out, whatever whatever it was that sort of gives us a glimpse into how you got to where you got to, what your mm -hmm. inspiration might've been, what your approach was. So you have 30 so, seconds. So literally it would be like a video of me talking about it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. A video of you. You could have a supporting slide. It's whatever you would need to do to communicate in a very short amount of time, sort of how you got to your magic. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Good question. Marina asked about um, use of stock images, stock video graphics using your everything's, video. Everything's fair game. Mm -hmm. You don't have to credit. Um, you can use music that's, you know, we're not releasing this commercially. So you can, you don't worry about copyrights. You can use music that might be copyright protected. It's just for, for this um, application. Sky's so, the limit. Go for it. Awesome. Any other, any other questions? Be sure to reach out oh, to us. Schoolers. Oops, go ahead. I was just going to say, be sure to reach out to us if you do have any questions in the meantime. Um, we look forward to seeing you all on campus. We look forward to your application. We hope today was helpful in getting you, helping you understand the M School um, program a little bit better. We appreciate you guys taking uh, part of your afternoon to, to spend it with us or morning. Thank you. Thank you all. Great Thank to meet you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Matt, do you have um ten minutes? I do. Let me uh, let me stop recording. <laughs>